Welcome again to Brightline Bites Live on the Brightline Eating Facebook page. My name is Becky. I'm part of the Brightline Eating social media team. And I'm here to do a little food prep with you today. Let's talk about what the four bright lines are for those who might be new here today. The four bright lines in bright line eating are no sugar, no flour. We only eat three meals a day, no snacks in between, and everything is weighed and measured. So those are the four bright lines. And what I'm going to show you today is some really simple fun ways that you can have compliant foods at the holiday that still feel fun and festive, but are totally compliant and aren't overly complicated, aren't, Susan Pierce Thompson likes to say, um, sexy foods, you know, they aren't really complicated recipes with um, really exciting ingredients. They're just simple foods, but prepared in a way that's fun and festive and just exciting. I don't know, not too exciting. Yeah, festive, festive is a good word. Um, <clears throat> Brightline Bites Live, just so you know, is um, a hashtag that we use, that a lot of members of our community use. So we started this series of videos to go along with that hashtag. If you search hashtag Brightline Bites on um, Instagram, on Facebook, you'll find lots of meal ideas, recipe ideas, um, beautiful plates that people in our members of our community have created. Um, and just to go along with that um, idea of sharing um, your meals, your recipes, uh, your different ways to prepare dishes, different ideas of meals that you can put together, um, we decided to do these Brightline Bites live videos to help you in the same way. So whether you're new to Brightline eating and you need some ideas, or maybe you've never cooked for yourself before and you're just learning how to make these healthy dishes, healthy meals, put together bright meals, or maybe you've been around for a while, but you want something new, want something different, need to change things up maybe for the season or just because um, you, know, you need to rotate in some new recipes to keep things fresh. That's what we are here for. So let's get started. I wanna talk a little bit about celebrations. So Christmas is coming up for those of you who celebrate Christmas. Uh, there's a lot of celebrations this time of year. There's Hanukkah, there's New Year's, there's Kwanzaa, there's all sorts of celebrations this time of year. And a lot of people might equate celebrating with food. You might, especially if you're new to Brightline eating, you might be worried about how are you going to celebrate this holiday without all those foods that we in Brightline even call not my food, NMF, how are you going to celebrate Christmas without NMF? How are you going to celebrate New Year's without NMF? There are plenty of strategies, plenty of ways to do it. There's a great vlog that um, Susan recorded this summer called My 18th Bright Birthday, about her 18th birthday that she celebrated um, while having completely bright lines. And she had a lovely day with her family. She had a beautiful celebratory dinner. She said she doesn't shy away from having a celebratory dinner. But Susan really talks about how the celebration, whether it's a birthday, whether it's a holiday, whatever the occasion is, you can still celebrate. You don't need that NMF. Just because it's a birthday doesn't mean you need cake. Just because it's Christmas doesn't mean that you need cookies or whatever you know your traditional NMF has been in the past, you can still have a wonderful, beautiful, meaningful celebration with lots of love, lots of happiness, lots of connection without focusing on that NMF. So uh, she also still says that, you know, she doesn't shy away from a celebratory meal. So you can still have something that's a little special, that's a little fun, that's a little bit festive. Festive is my word of the day today. <laughs> Um, without it being non-compliant. You can still stay within your bright lines um, and have a really lovely meal. Um, the first, so that's, if you wanna watch that vlog, please do so, it's a great vlog. Um, and uh, get a little bit of insight into um, celebrating, celebrating and how to tie or not tie food into your celebration. Um, so here's, uh, one of the ideas that we're going to talk about today, and this is a simple preparation. There's no cooking involved, and it's a basic recipe, but I've just made it a little bit, um, in the way that we're going to present it on the plate, it's just a little bit more fun, 
So it'll make it a little bit more fun for Christmas. And um, this same, what, what we're gonna make is a caprese wreath, a caprese salad wreath. You can do it in the shape of a wreath. You could do this in any shape you want and eat it year round. It's a delicious salad. Um, but I'm gonna show you the caprese wreath in just a minute. But I also wanna say that the caprese wreath appears in our holiday survival guide. Um, our team just put out a beautiful, beautiful holiday survival guide. It's the third edition, the third year that we've done this. And you can find the link in the description and in the comments to download the holiday guide. It's a PDF. And there are beautiful articles in there from our coaches, from Susan. There are bright body transformation stories in there that will just blow your mind. There are uh, recipes in there. There's a lot of great tips for um, getting through the holidays, gratitudes about the holidays, all sorts of things, all, everything, everything in there. And it's, and it's gorgeous to boot. It's a beautiful guide. So this caprese wreath recipe is actually one that my family has made and, um, and decided to include it in the, in the holiday guide because it's just a fun, a fun recipe for the holidays. Now what I've done, I have a platter here. It's, um, I don't know, about a 12 or 14 inch platter. You can make this as big or as small as you want, depending on how many people you're serving. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it together and I'll just show you how, how I do it and how I present it. And then we'll talk about how you would incorporate this into your meal. So I have two beef steak tomatoes here, large beef steak tomatoes. And the reason that I've picked, um, I've sliced them up already. The reason that I selected beef steak tomatoes is because um, I also use slices of mozzarella cheese. This is mozzarella. It's sorry, it's a little hard to see. There you go. Fresh mozzarella. It came in a log that was sort of about this big. And I've sliced that up as well. So this is very, very simple. This is not um, complicated food prep. All you're going to do is take a couple of slices of tomato and a slice of cheese and just alternate those around your plate. And you can um, use them in really whatever proportion you like. I like to use a little bit more tomato than mozzarella uh, only because then that way I have more vegetables available and less fat because this mozzarella, you could count it as a protein or as a fat when you weigh and measure your meal. So you could have this actually really any time of day that you want for an, I mean, for any meal, your breakfast, your lunch or dinner. So most likely you would have this at lunch or dinner. What my family has done in the past is um, we've, had this for dinner alongside our um, meat entree. And the way that I would uh, serve this when it's all done, just grab, I've used almost all the tomato now and probably about half of my cheese. So I could also serve the cheese alongside this for anyone else who wanted it, who isn't um, following Bright Lines for their meal. So you simply, very, very simply, arrange them in a circle. And then also, I have here some fresh basil. And you can kind of tuck those in, tuck those around. I've already washed this basil. And this ends up being I mean, this is simple, right? This is really simple food. You're slicing things up and you're arranging them on a plate. Um, but it ends up being really pretty and really kind of fun because it's red and green and white. So it's festive colors and you put it in the shape of a wreath and it just looks pretty and it's fun. I mean, if people were having parties these days, which we're not because we're staying home and we're staying safe, but if you were having parties, this is a lovely, lovely thing to take to a um, holiday party. Instead of just your standard vegetable tray, you show up with a caprese wreath. 
People will be so impressed. Just put a few more of these basil leaves in here. And I just put the whole leaf right in there because fresh basil is yummy, yummy, yummy. I love fresh herbs of any kind. So there we go. How pretty is that? I'm gonna stick one more down here in the bottom. Right there. How fun is that? Now you notice I left a little space up here because I'm gonna put a bow on our wreath. So I have just some cherry tomatoes. Now you could kind of come up with something maybe with your other slices of tomato, whatever you wanna do, or you don't even have to have a little bow. <laughs> I just kind of put a little bundle of uh, cherry tomatoes at the top or the bottom, however you want to look at it. And then I'll grab a whole sprig of basil right off the end of one of the plants there and one of the stems. Kind of arrange that right on the top. And how pretty is that? Super simple. One last step, two last steps put a little bit of salt on this. I have some sea salt. This is a nice high quality sea salt. And I'm just going to grind a little bit of sea salt onto there. And final touch, I have some balsamic vinegar. Just going to give it a little drizzle of balsamic vinegar. And you can always serve uh, your balsamic and your salt alongside it if you prefer or you can add, uh, you know, put it alongside it as well so people can add more if they want, or you can leave it off to the side for people to put their own on. There you have it, caprese wreath, easy as can be. Easy as can be and so cute and so fun. Now the way that I would um, measure, weigh and measure this for my Bright Line meal is I could take some tomato I mean, you're gonna pull slices off of here. I might serve this with little tongs or a little spatula. I'll take slices of the tomato, weigh and measure that as part of my vegetable. I would take some slices of the mozzarella, weigh and measure that as my fat. Um, you can count the mozzarella as protein if you'd like, but generally when I'm eating this, I will count the tomato as my vegetable and the mozzarella as my fat and have that as part of my Christmas dinner. So hopefully, I think that's a little fun and maybe you can try that this Christmas. Okay, so that's the Caprese wreath. And as I mentioned, that's in the Holiday Survival Guide. So you can um, download that at the link in the description in the comments and find that recipe in there. So now we're gonna do one more thing, which is fun as well. This one I have a, a slate slate cheese board here, which has been well used as you can see. And we're gonna make a little fruit tree. Now this is something that um, you see a lot of in our uh, community, especially people who are celebrating a birthday. Maybe they have like a fruit cake instead of a traditional birthday NMF cake. Um, they'll use fruit to make a beautiful presentation and it's, it's a great idea. Um, so what we're gonna do is this kind of the same thing, except instead of um, building a cake, we're gonna make a little tree. And again, this is simple, simple, simple. I've sliced up some kiwi here. Easy as can be, slicing up some kiwi. And I have found that if you're gonna arrange it this particular way, you will want to put the kiwi, arrange them kind of vertically. If you do it horizontally this way, your tree gets kind of squat and squishy shaped. But we're gonna make a little Christmas tree here. And you can, let me see, I need a smaller slice there. You can arrange these really in any way that works any way that works for you. And I'm not making a very big tree here today. I'm making sort of a smaller one. If you were going to a party or serving a lot of people, you could definitely make this much bigger. You could, I'm gonna slide these down a little bit. 
you could um, put this on a tray and double or triple layer all of the kiwi. You could um, put this in like a tray and surround it with uh, canned pineapple or um, uh, fresh pineapple, peaches, pears, some sort of uh, neutral colored fruit so that the green would pop out and really look like a tree. So I have a little tree shape going here. And like I said, this is simple. I'm gonna pop some raspberries in here as a little decoration. Oh, that one's a little squished looking. This is so simple. It's cut up some fruit and arrange it. This is not the type of food that you're gonna obsess over that is gonna cause you to lose any of your peace around food. There is no NMF involved here, but it's gonna be pretty on your table. It's gonna be fun, especially if you have um, kids like I do, and maybe you're you, uh, used to maybe bond over decorating NMF during the holidays. Instead, maybe you can do something fun like old build Christmas fruit trees. I have a couple cinnamon sticks here. Pop those on the bottom for a little trunk on our tree. One more in there. There you go, a little trunk. You could even make individual little trees. Let everybody build their own. Got a couple strawberries here too that I've cut up. Little fruit ornaments on our little fruit tree. This is just, just fun, just fun and festive. Now, I have seen, I think the picture for this event today had a star anise at the top of the Christmas tree. Um, those are, is really cute. Star anise is expensive and I have no other use for it. So I didn't get any of those for today. What I did do was I cut off the top of one of my strawberries, kind of like a little star. This is gonna be hard to tip without my trunk falling off to show you, but it's just a fun little fruit Christmas tree. And like I said, you can scale this to whatever size uh, gathering you're having. If you've got a big family and you wanna make a big like fruit salad for your lunch or breakfast on Christmas day, that would be so fun. And you could fill up an entire tray with all different kinds of fruit and uh, layer up the kiwi so that it, you know, if you're, if you layer this up two or three layers of kiwi and then surround the whole thing with pineapple or something like that, throw your raspberries or strawberries in there. Um, there's probably even a fun way that you could cut the strawberry to put on the top as a star, or if you've got some other idea of how to top this with uh, something fun. Um, I was also thinking that like cutting a shape out of a slice of pineapple or something like that, you could do something fun there. You can be so creative with this, so creative. And all it is is fresh fruit, delicious, healthy, compliant, just fresh fruit, simple as can be. But how fun is this? Fun little Christmas fruit tree. I like it. And like I said, you can make those individual. You can make a great big one. One more time to show you our beautiful, whoop, Caprese wreath. One of my cherry tomatoes ran away. There we go, a beautiful Caprese wreath. So thank you very much for joining me. As I said, please download that holiday survival guide. It is absolutely beautiful and you will love every page of it. Absolutely love every page of it. So check that out. The link is in the description and in the comments. And thank you for joining me. I hope you stay safe out there. Have a beautiful, lovely, bright day. Bye.